Sony Interactive Entertainment is following through on its earlier plans to end production of the PlayStation Vita, at least in Japan, as spotted by Jamatsu. The Japanese website listings for the two remaining models of the handheld system now come with the warning that shipments are scheduled to end soon. The Vita itself first launched in Japan in December 2011 and came to North America and Europe. Just a few months later in February, it's not a sudden production halt by any means. Sony has slowly been winding down its support of the Vita a four years at this point, both through things like recent PlayStation Plus changes and various production changes like the Death Moves. No specific end date is mentioned on the listing. But Sony had already said that production will fully cease in Japan. During 2019 so it's safe to say the system does not have long. And, as Jamatsu points out, a similar notice appeared on the listing for the PlayStation 3 when that system was discontinued back in 2000. And 17 month production ended roughly two months later. Back when the discontinuation was first mentioned in it late last year, Sony Interactive Entertainment's senior vice president Hiro Yuki Oda noted as well that the company had no announcements planned for a successor to the handheld system. Sidecasts can make hard break your game. Good ones draw players further into your world. Bad ones may sell players on the entire experience. To that end, we each turned to several game writers and designers for their thoughts and recommendations on great side quests, are games with generally strong side quests that every developer should study. Their responses are summarized below. But first, courtesy of FFORM Black Eye writer, designer, and Obsidian Creative Director Chris Avaloni. Here are four general guidelines to evaluate everything against. The best side quests in the business are in The Witcher 3, says Deep Silver Volition Senior Designer Brad Johnson, who did mission design on the past three Saints Row games. Their side quests are more involved from both a gameplay and story perspective than most games. Main quests. I expected to skip through some boring dialogue and do some simple fetch quests, but each one kept drawing me in and kept my interest. There were always twists, trying to throw off expectations. This was a conscious decision by developer CD Projekt, which wanted a request, even the little ones about fetching, or delivering something for somebody, to be memorable. Take one of the very earliest side quests as an example. In a frying pan, speak and span. The player is tasked with finding an old woman's soot covered frying pan, which she had been lent to a stranger, who seemingly then licked off with it. Turns out it's just inside the house just standing outside of. And the man had had more important things to worry about than returning the pan after using the suit to making far writing letters. Such a mundane, menial task could easily be seen as beneath a great and respected hero, like Gerald. But it's presented with such respect, empathy, and sincerity that you cannot help but feel warmed to Gerald the big, tough witcher, who holds the simple folk of the world in the highest regard. It also subtly informs both the law of the area and the story at large, and both things go. Find a crappy old frying pan, and its rewards, baked apples and apple juice, reflect the nature of the town and its inhabitants, which is exactly what Avaloni says a good side quest should do, taking away even the most ordinary, uneventful, routine quests can be memorable and affecting. You just have to make the effort to design them so. The Witcher 3 as that cast a designer motive used to Moscovished, thinks that Fallout 2 has particularly good cast of designs. Tasks are simple, but open-ended, he explains.
you can complete many of them in a variety of ways on disk and very organically. They do not seem forced, nor do they involve much hand holding, if any at all. Indeed, the game is so open ended that most quests can be bypassed altogether, meaning that nearly every quest could be described as a side quest, and the player's actions have consequences, even in the more innocuous quests that can play out both over the course of their remaining journey and in the ending. Fallout 2 also cleverly works the skill system into a dialogue, with every state affecting dialogue choices and the results, rather than following the common approach of only checking communication-related skills. If you invested heavily in small guns, for example, you might end up using that knowledge to impress someone, says Tom Askovich. If you know a lot about computers, you could we used that fact to reprogram a robot, etc. This use of gameplay related skills in dialogues and quests was very unique and immersive, something I come to expect from a pen paper RPG, not a video game. Taking away side quests, like main quests, benefit from an open endedness that allows for different solutions and play styles and that ideally also acknowledges all of the player, characters' relevant skills. Tomoskovich says that Fallout, Nuvaka says, many of the same qualities as Fallout 2, but he adds that his approach to building quests in an open world setting is also great. They felt consequential and interesting, he explains and yet managed to overcome the difficulties of constructing complex quests in an open-world environment. It was a big inspiration for me when working on The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, and its expansions. Perhaps the best side cast of the bunch involves helping some duos launch a space expedition, or helping to sabotage said expedition to complete their great journey to a place far beyond the cruel wasteland. It's a bizarre quest with an eccentric, charismatic cult leader, huge super mutants that can turn invisible, the leader of whom is even more eccentric than the head ghoul, what with him being beholden to the guidance of an antler skull on his desk, a tech genius, human who thinks has a doodle, several big choices to make, splendid sound design, and it healthy does of twisted humor. It's ridiculous, but it's memorable and weighty from beginning to end, as every good cast should be, regardless of its relevance to the main plot. Side note, I have limited Fallout's presence here to two games for balance, but every entry in the series is widely recognized for excellent cast writing and design with numerous side casts worthy of study. Fallout 3, as Wasteland Survival Guide, is a great tutorial side quest. For instance, while Fallout 4, as Last Voyage of the United States, as Constitution, uses flavorful, staging and character decision to elevate an otherwise generic side quest to a higher level. Taking away, side quests present a great opportunity to flesh out the world building, and let the player have a supporting role in the defining moments of other characters, is, especially in an open world environment. Wasteland 3 led designer George Seitz loves it when side quests directly affect the gameplay, taking something away from the player, or temporarily giving them something new, especially if the player can gain it permanently later, often makes a Sidecast more memorable, he explains. A good example comes from a quest involving Chihiro, one of the player's companions in Baldur's Gate 2. The quest begins with a nobleman who wants revenge for being exposed, as a slaver places a magical curse on Chihiro, whose stats then get progressively weakened until the curse is broken. Some designers will argue against the tactic of debuffing player characters until a quest is completed, says it's. But the gameplay implications of this quest 
were a huge motivator for me, and it made me genuinely angry at the vengeful nobleman. How dare he weaken a member of my carefully crafted party? This says that this created a sense of urgency and made the side cast feel much more personal, although he cautions that it's not a design tactic to be taken lightly. Do it poorly and players will get angry at the game as much as the villainous characters. He adds that he believes that side casts should always take an unexpected turn at some point along the way. A view that he attributes to a bolder escape to as untrustworthy NPCs. He cites another example involving Jahir. First she tells the player they have been summoned to the headquarters of her faction. But then on arrival, they are interrogated and sentenced to medical imprisonment, whereupon they must fight their way out. Later the party is confronted by Shahir's old mentor, Sassid's 